up book lovers, it's your girl Jeez Wiz here. I'm in my kitchen, it is currently Saturday morning, and I'm starting a new reading vlog. This reading vlog is going to be different from the ones that I've done before. I've talked about the concept of this reading vlog, and I'm finally going to do it. This right here is a binge reading vlog, where I binge read a series, and only that series, and nothing else. This is a bit tough for me, because I like to break it up usually. Sometimes I like to read thick books, and then read things like manga in between, or other series in between series. Series, that's what I tend to do. This time I'm going to do it differently. This time it's just a hardcore binge read of The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. So that means today I'm going to get started on The Kiss of Deception. Before I proceed with this reading vlog, I am going to talk about my pre-expectations of this series. I have the lowest expectations for this series. I have never actually really wanted to read this series. It's not because that I think that it's going to be horrible. It's just there are no buzzwords that get me attracted to reading this book. There's nothing about the plot summary that intrigues me. The only thing that is actually intrigued me about this book series are the reviewers that I trust who love this series. And to me, it just seems like a generic YA fantasy by the way that it has been described. What I do know is that this year I've been surprised by so many different YA fantasies, usually new releases, because some of them are bringing something fresh and unique to the table while also having the nostalgic feeling of young adult fantasy. So with the Remnant Chronicles and the way that it has been described, I don't really see its uniqueness. When I look at my bookshelves, I never think to myself, that seems like something different, I'm gonna pick that up. What I do know is that people keep on saying that they've been mind I'm blown by the book because it has a twist. So what I do know is that there's a twist in this book. I'm gonna be anticipating it the entire time. And I don't even know why this book series is a trilogy. Like, I don't know the premise of the entire trilogy. I just know the premise of the first book. This being said, I am so happy that I vented this because if I end up really liking this series, you all will know how surprised I will be. This series is like three thick sons. I love my thick boys. It's Saturday. Literally just gotten out of bed. I literally just got changed. Camilo has just literally left for work. So today I will be filming my seven on Sunday. Day, and then I will be probably editing it this weekend. This weekend is also Father's Day. Just remembered I'm having a dinner. And it's not even just Father's Day dinner. It's Camilo's graduation dinner. He just graduated with a bachelor in 3D animation. Babe, I love you and I'm so proud of you. And there's a lot going on this week, as usual, because I work full time. I have to stick to my challenge. So let's challenge myself to do this. I just made it up to chapter 14, which means I'm on page 112. I don't even have a bookmark. I don't hate it. I think that it's okay so far. There's meant to be a lot of secrets surrounding this trilogy because of the big twist. Who's the assassin and who's the prince? I finally know their names. The funny thing is, out of all the love triangles that I've been spoiled for, I haven't really been spoiled for this one. I mean, maybe I have, but I've just been ignoring them, I guess, so far. Kind of do like Rafe, but I don't want to give myself hope. What if she ends up with Kaden? I really just don't know what to expect at all because the series is full of twists. And I was thinking to myself, what if she actually does end up with the prince at the end, even if she didn't want to marry him? Then I thought to myself, it'd actually be cooler if she ended up with the assassin. In their culture, they were kind of like raised to hate the royalty anyway. So like, it would be pretty cool actually if she ended up with the assassin. But I don't know because I haven't been told, I haven't been spoiled for it. And yeah, I just kind of, am curious. But instead of looking ahead, I have to focus on the now. I'm literally 100 pages into this series. We're gonna see where we go from here. What up everyone? I just finished filming and editing my 7 on Sunday video for tomorrow. These next few hours I definitely have the intention of picking it up and reading it and getting through a good chunk of it. All I'm thinking about right now is how many books and new releases and other books that I've received either in the mail or gone book shopping for yesterday. I went to Kinnikinia yesterday but like two volumes some manga. Thinking about reading them right now. But no, I have to focus on these backlist titles. I'm gonna see how I feel about them because that's the only way I'm gonna be able to produce this vlog. Oh my goodness, I forgot to show you guys. I did my seven on Sunday and I just realized that I did not acknowledge my Totoro. I have a son. I bought him for Camilla. Isn't he cute? And also speaking about couples gifts, Camilla bought me those peas in a pod and I'm just obsessed with them. I love them. Just look at them. Enough swooning. Time to get some reading done.
essentially halfway through the book. What I tend to do when I go through like reading sprints or something like that is cut the book up into, I mean, I don't literally cut the book up, that's obvious. I like to cut the book up into sections in order to get through a good chunk. So earlier on today, I got through around 100 to around 115 pages because I knew this book isn't exactly 500 pages, but it's close to 500 pages. If I was to get to there or page 125, I'd be just over a quarter way through it, which is the way I see it. If you guys are wondering why I read things so quickly, it's because I usually go into a book with a goal of reading a certain page count. Sometimes it burns me out, sometimes I can't handle it, whereas sometimes I am able to stick to it. In this case, I'm able to stick to it, which is pretty good. I'm starting to ship a couple in here. And the hard thing is because this has like, what, love triangle potential, I like Leanne Rafe a lot. And I'm still waiting for this twist to happen. <laughs> If you guys need an update, I'm on page 256 right now, which means I'm just past halfway through the book. Leah and Rafe have a scene alone. The romantic feelings, oh my goodness. What I do love right now is that I'm starting to get invested. The thing that's gonna keep me going in this series is seeing how Leah and Rafe go. I think what I also really love about this book so far is that it reminds me what it is like to fall in love. God, I'm an emotional mess. Um, <laughs> wow, I actually was fooled by the twist. <laughs> Let's just say, when you put a protagonist through so much grief to the point that they have to make sacrifices and then things just don't go well, um, that leaf blow in the background is so loud, oh my goodness. Mary E. Pearson, you have cracked me. I started off this day thinking that I wasn't gonna be invested in this book, and look where we are. You know, I'm just here thinking that I wasn't actually gonna really guess the twist. And for some reason, I was just truly fooled. I honestly think the story kind of made me allow myself to be fooled by it. I'm on page 309, which means I'm on uh, chapter 45. Wow, I'm feeling so much distress for these characters right now. That's my update for that. I haven't been filming the time lapse. As you guys saw from the very last update that I gave you, I was very frustrated, very flustered. I just felt like I needed a tiny bit of space, so please don't mind me. That being said, I am updating you guys right now on what I've read. I'm up to chapter 51. I'm on page 346, which means I essentially have under 150 pages left of this book. From what I've read in this last hour to an hour and a half, it's just been so frustrating. For me, it's heartbreaking because I'm the type of person who is empathetic when it comes to the characters if I can get behind them and if I can relate to them, and one of these characters just stole my heart over time in this book and like I love them. I did mention this earlier it's like re-experiencing the bittersweet feeling of falling in love. That's how I feel with one of the characters and what I hate so much at the moment is that that one specific character in this point of the story is getting the shortest chapters ever and I need more. I need more from his perspective because as much as it's good to get like Leah's perspective and what has been going on at the moment even though it's horrific I just want to hear his voice you know. All you people who've loved the Remnant Chronicles all along must be laughing so much right now. I started this book at 9 a.m. this morning. It's currently 8 p.m. and I finished it. You can obviously tell that I had some whiskey too. Let me just say that this book isn't perfect because it has its slow moments. At least the characters that we have in here. I mean, one character that I love in particular. <laughs> That makes up for that. Oh, this is just so good. Was Jace was the same person like right now as this morning? From what I remember, I went into this book 
not expecting anything from it. I thought it was going to be pretty much generic. And you know what? It does kind of have a generic plot. Princess runs away. This all being said, generic plotline or generic sounding plotline or not, Mary E. Pearson is a talented writer. She knows how to get you to empathize. That is exactly why I was crying in frustration earlier because that is just what she does best. I was not expecting to finish it today at all. I'm fascinated to see where The Heart of Betrayal is gonna go. I liked how this book ended. I do have to admit, towards the end, it started getting slow and dull because there's a turn in the story. After the twist that everybody talks about, I understand these things need to happen for the protagonist, but there's a character in here that I absolutely dislike and I hate the interactions. I mean, I don't hate them because, you know, they happen for a reason, but I don't like the interactions with them and the protagonist. I want to accept they come from a specific background and that makes sense, but at the very same time, I hate him and I don't want him getting in the way of my ship. Like I mentioned earlier, tomorrow is Father's Day and also we're celebrating Miller's graduation. I'm not saying that I won't have time to read tomorrow. I don't know where the story is gonna go. It seems like a political tragedy at some points, honestly. like towards the end of this book, I was devastated as to what happened to someone who I actually wanted to get to know even more. Thinking about it, running away from a wedding has its consequences in the royal worlds of fantasy. I mean, I don't blame our protagonist, Leah. I mean, I could have, but when I really think about it, I don't think that she's meant to be blamed at all. I mean, when you've got to be arranged to marry someone that you don't even know, like, I understand. But unfortunately, that comes with consequences. It comes with ramifications. I think the next few books, we're going to be dealing with that. Top of the morning to ya. So, it's Sunday, meaning it's Father's Day. And this morning, I spent time with my dad watching online church because that's what he requested of me today. Today I will probably be going out with my family. That being said, I'm gonna get something read today. Not a complete book because I don't have the time today. I am going to continue reading Heart of Betrayal. You guys might be thinking, geez, wait, continue reading Heart of Betrayal? I read like two chapters yesterday night and I forgot to bookmark them. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I'm only on like page 20. Man, I want someone to block Caden so bad. I mean, Caden, ain't all that bad. People do feel sympathetic for him, but no, I'm team Rafe all the way. What I'm gonna do is probably get dressed so that I'm ready to go out when my parents are back, you know, hanging out, having their little date together. And then they're going to drive me to family's place. So what I'll do is I'll take the book with me there too, because what is a family social event if you don't bring a book because you're an introverted person? <laughs> I don't know. I am pretty excited to see my cousins. I'm not going to lie. I aim to read a good chunk of The Heart of Betrayal today. Definitely don't think I'm going to finish it. I'd be lucky enough if I got halfway through it. hours since I updated you guys and I just wanted to let you know that I am on page 169. Nice. Like the Kiss of Deception, it has like its slow moments building up the story and stuff but I think that this is gonna be like even more extravagant. I actually see a lot of reviews saying that it's better than the Kiss of Deception but I'm thinking where though? Like we have more Caden in here. <laughs> Sorry, I think I only have 300 pages left because this is a 470 page book, which isn't bad This is actually I think the shortest book in the trilogy. I just want to experience it all I want to know what happens. I want to know if the characters that I absolutely love are happy together or things are just gonna end in tragedy because you know what everything is just so crazy at the moment I am not surprised if anyone who I love is gonna die. That's sad. Maybe I might read some on the way to my grandparents place. We will see the progress that I make.
it is currently Sunday afternoon slash evening. I read 30 pages since the last time I saw you guys, but I'm still kind of craving reading it. But then again, festivities are happening, so I'm not gonna sit down and read. I am going to celebrate. This is my failed congratulation sign for Camilla's graduation. Hey, it's gonna be good. Just really poorly decorated. I didn't read for the rest of the night because we celebrated, we partied, and also I was just tired of reading because I was either going to finish that book yesterday night and spend all the time with it, or I was going to take a break. What I'm planning to do is finish the book. What I know for sure is that on my commute, I can easily get around between 150 pages to 200 pages because that's how long my commute goes, which means that's the majority of the book anyway. I kind of do expect to finish this book unless, of course, something pops up with work and I can't make that decision have to work, you know? You guys will see what happens. I somehow predicted that this was gonna happen. <laughs> Dang it, why? <laughs> why? Oh my god, okay, I have to keep reading. <gasps> no, 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 that, no, 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 <laughs> no. No, this shouldn't, no, just no. That was torture. <laughs> I do have to admit, I find that a lot of people prefer this sequel over the first one. I prefer the first one. It does not mean that the Heart of Betrayal does not have its moments because it does. It's just, there's so much anxiety, so much torture for me because I want to see these characters in a different situation, which for some people was fine. For me, on the other hand, the whole time I'm just like, please, please, just let there be hope, let there be hope, let there be hope. And like this whole book, like what goes around comes around essentially. That's like the moral of the story. Leah leaves and that doesn't leave the protagonist or any of the, of the characters without circumstance. <laughs> I don't know how to feel right now. I decided as soon as I finished work today, which I have, that I was going to finish this book and I did. And I told myself to hold off doing something before I finished the book because I know that first and foremost, I actually wanted to finish the book rather than see the book mail that I got today first. <laughs> so I have book mail and I'm gonna be showing you guys. So hopefully this will ease my frustration after reading Heart of Betrayal. Or I'm just crying out of nowhere. I hope everything turns that okay by the end of the next book because that book just destroyed me 
<laughs> get back in their tier. So you guys might be curious as to what I received. I purchased this the other day, and the reason why I did is because I'm pure and utter trash, even though I think that the series is pure and utter trash. I just needed to know what happens next, and I hope that there's some sort of character development in the series, but um... Blood and Honey. <laughs> It's here in all of its glory. I've mentioned before that this series, or at least a character I'm not at all a fan of, even though I understand his circumstances. As someone who has grown up in a very strict religious background and now has progressed on from that, I can totally empathize with this character and his circumstances. However, I want to see him develop. And I also want Lou to call him out. But I'm also here because I'm here to be entertained. Because Serpent and Dove, not gonna lie, was very entertaining. A lot of you guys are probably very surprised that I'm picking up the series when I gave the first one 2.5 out of 5 stars. Just because I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars does not mean that I was not entertained and it doesn't mean that I didn't want to read the sequel. That's why I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. I hate it and I love it at the very same time. It's a very balanced rating. It's not like it's mediocre. No, it's pretty entertaining. But it's also a pretty triggering series for me considering that the darkness of the previous book is something that really triggered me like in terms of religion just brutality and stuff. Those kind of things I always do get triggered by. So if you guys also struggle with the same thing, I probably just recommend you go into the series with caution. Or even like if you just don't really want imperfect relationships, then I probably don't recommend this book. Then we're gonna go to something that I ordered from the United States of America, and so it took a few weeks to get here. The first book out of the stack I gotta show you guys is Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. I love Clarabelle, and I have just been so excited for Ghost Squad, and unfortunately I didn't buy it as soon as it came out. I've been really looking forward to Ghost Squad. Oh, that, that actually ain't bad. I mean, that's like an orange spine, but oh my goodness. Ghost Squad is engraved into this book. I love it. At least you got something right, Scholastic. The next book I have to take out of this box is a book that I have been anticipating. Probably going to be one of the next books that I read after I finish The Remnant Chronicles. It is The Crow Rider by Kaylin Josephson. Let's see if it's got the pretty engraved... Oh. No! First book out of the duology has like amazing engraving. The book without its dust jacket, but this one doesn't. That being said, I like this cover even better than the first one. The first book, The Storm Crow, put me under some intense stress. So I'm hoping that the Crow Rider will resolve that. And then the final book that I ordered that is in this box is Vicious Spirits by Kat Cho, which is the companion novel to Wicked Fox. I started Wicked Fox back in the day and then Scribd cut me off. So um, I purchased the physical copy, but what I did listen from Wicked Fox was enjoyable. Like I really enjoyed the story. I just knew that as soon as I found out there was gonna be a companion novel, I was like, sign me up. I'm purchasing this book. Look at how beautiful that cover is. Okay, this mini unboxing definitely did cheer me up. Now I'm starting to think about the book again. Okay. The Heart of Betrayal and The Kiss of Deception. Both of those books were torture. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. I'm into that. One more book to go. I guess we gotta do it. to page 103, which is not really too much of a den because <laughs> it's like a 700 page book. It definitely does have like the little slow start to a good old Remnant Chronicles book. It has answered a few questions I had and I feel like this book, because there are so many questions that you are asking throughout the trilogy, needs to answer all of them. If you're gonna finish a trilogy like this, there's good reason for the last book to be thick. What up book lovers? It is Tuesday and did I read anything else besides what I've vlogged? No, I haven't. My goal is to get halfway through this book, but even better goal is to get probably up to page 400. It's really hard not to consume this book all at once. Like, all I wanted to do was read it yesterday night. But at the very same time, I spent time with Kimberlo and we watched Dark on Netflix. Highly recommend that show if you haven't watched it yet. That was a good way to get my mind off of this book because this book or this series is binge-worthy material. I don't have that much time, so I've just got to get ready and then leave the house and I will take you along with me.
up for clovers. Got up to 340. Um, now what I'm gonna do here, because I am frustrated and I kind of do need to express myself, is if you have not yet read Beauty of Darkness or if you have not yet read the series at all, what I'll do is I'll put the book icon up until I have finished talking about spoilers. I'm frustrated right now. And I feel like I do need to explain why I am so frustrated and so mad right now to the people who have read this book already so you guys know my frustration and I kind of also really want to document this frustration as well so that's kind of part of the reading journey. I've done everything I could to make sure that I have not spoiled this book series so far but right now I just need to so the book icon of The Beauty of Darkness will be up on the screen until you need to leave so please turn off your captions or mute me. You guys know how I was talking about how much I loved a character towards the beginning of the series that was Rafe. I absolutely love Rafe. I do still love Rafe, but I do not agree with <laughs> I Rafe what are you doing every single time you have opened your mouth in these last few hundred pages you have said the wrong thing that is what I'm like super frustrated about I hate it when wrong things are said multiple times and I you know what Rafe has done this a few times. I do see potential in him and I do understand why he's so frustrated but he keeps on saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. I completely understand why Leah is hurt and I can't say that Leah is flawless because she's not. She is done some worldly gray things as well and she has kept things from Rafe but for me this is very frustrating. It is funny because I was alluding to it before. I hated every scene with Kaden. Like, I just could not stand Kaden before this book. Like, I'm actually starting to put up with Kaden and I feel like Caden has learned his lesson. And I'm not saying that I ship Caden over Rafe because that's not the thing at all. But I really hate Rafe's attitude right now. Not even just his attitude. I just hate the fact that he's saying the wrong thing at the wrong time and he's not keeping his mouth shut. But then again, like obviously in relationships, you need to talk it out. But he just keeps on saying the wrong thing and it's just so frustrating. Mary E. Pearson, why did you do this? I will talk about the one thing that I just cannot get past and obviously it's the part that Leah cannot get past the fact that he kind of like rubbed Aster's death in her face like that's just mm, like I hate that I really hate that so much as a partner or as a supportive partner you'd know what would hit hard and I think that he was doing this just to protect her obviously he was doing all of this to protect her and he did not want to have to go for the grief of losing her I get that but he did it in such a hurtful way. I don't think Rafe is perfect. Leah's not perfect. Caden's definitely not perfect. But Caden is showing us a good side of him now. I think that's the very cool thing about the story. Every single one of these characters, even though <laughs> some of them know right from wrong, all of them are flawed. All of them will betray each other because, I mean, deception, betrayal, darkness, the whole trilogy is about it. And it's not afraid to hurt anyone. I'm at the point of beauty of darkness where I am just frustrated. I'll see if I continue on any more tonight. I know that my goal was to get to page like 400 and that might happen tonight. But also there's a reading vlog that I still haven't edited yet. And that was my reading vlog from like last week or the week before. I think I just got to do some editing right now. Just try to ease my feelings going into the rest of the beauty of darkness because it's a tough one so far. It really is. I think once we got to page 150 to like 200 that's when things started to get really tough for me these characters just need to chill and so do i so i'm just gonna take a break from it so i can chill and then we'll see where we go from here good morning book lovers it is wednesday today and i'm having a really bad hair day my goodness and it's gonna be raining today <sighs> here's the deal i got up this morning I read 100 pages. I know that I have a mission to finish this book today because I know that this work day is probably going to be very busy, but at the very same time, I want the whole day to just be able to soak in the last parts of this book so that I will have enough space between today and tomorrow before I start my next read. If I read a little bit tomorrow and then potentially want to go on to a next book, I'm not even going to know what I'm going to be able to do with my life. I at least want to finish this book today so that tonight I can just breathe I can just process the finale and see how I go. This technically means that I have around 300-ish pages left. My plan was to read 100 pages before my commute. And then on my commute, read 100 pages. On my commute back, read another 100 pages. And then at home, read the final 100 pages. So let's see if I'm going to make it happen. <laughs>
Hi everyone! It's the evening. No, I have not finished the book. I've got under 100 pages left. Obviously, I'm going to share with you guys later why some of this book has been literal torture. But this is for a very different reason that I did not anticipate in this final book and it's actually made me angry more than anything. What I'm going to do right now is binge read the last parts. I have already been emotionally hit many times today but i'm ready for it to happen again i'm also expecting this finale to be bittersweet this book has been a very bittersweet journey so far and like i don't think i have any hope for the rest of the book to be honest i think it's my favorite book out of the series at all i think this book could have been shorter for how much emotional torture i've been put through let's go into my final read <laughs> You walked in at just the right time. I finished it. Um, <laughs> you have to get it from the middle, babe. <laughs> yes. So I'm never going to emotionally recover from that at all. <laughs> I told you I finished the book. <laughs> Uh, no, no. People did die, but yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I need to get my thoughts together. So I'm going to recap how I feel, how I can sum it up in this next clip right here. Because right now, I don't think I'm able to emotionally function in a way where I can. Okay, is this thing on? What's up, book lovers? It's G Swiss here a month later. And the reason why I'm here a month later after I filmed that footage is because the whole reading of the Remnant Chronicles experience was so emotionally taxing for me that I could not handle editing that video for a very long time and I'd have to do it in intervals. But also, the last clip that I filmed for this video was more of an angry slash emotional thing. And another explanation for why I was so emotional, even though the book did really get me, was because I took a few days off my hormonal pill at the time. Obviously, I'm not necessarily saying my emotions were bad or abnormal or anything like that because it's good to show emotion and it's good to feel empathy when it comes to books. So I'm not saying that it's bad to, but I was very emotional at that time and kind of also very depressed while reading it because I did miss a few days on the pill. This being said, I've cut out many times of me mentioning how much I love the Remnant Chronicles while reading this series. You have no idea how much I was raving about it until the final book. So I've cut that out of the vlog. Now this is a full on spoiler section. So if you watched up this point and skipped all the spoilers because you did not want to be spoiled for the series, I will be spoiling the series now and giving an overall review. Let me just say before you go, do I recommend the series? If you are naturally empathetic and emotional like myself, and if you want a very good romance, this is not your series. If you're wanting a good like political fantasy, this should be your go-to series. But if you are wanting a healthy romance, I would not recommend this series. Anyway, I'm going to cut to spoilers and I'm going to be talking about this book in full detail. Now, it has been a month since I've read this book series and while a few details are dusty around there, I remember enough to know that this book series triggered so many emotions out of me, including anger. The Beauty of Darkness, when I objectively look at it now as opposed to what I did when I first read it, when I first read it, I was just like, oh yeah, you know, like maybe this is a four out of five stars because as much as I am not really fully happy with this, it comes from a really good series. No, when I really think about it, it's a 2.5 to 5 stars. I cannot give it higher or lower than that at 
the moment because the political aspects of the book are great. Caden's character development is great and seeing Pauline again, absolutely great. I also love the character of Leah, but I have mentioned in this video before, Rafe, while I did say that I liked him and I wanted to see him succeed, I've gotten to the point where I do not like Rafe anymore. It's not because I'm taking a step back away and I think to myself, you know, maybe I've changed my mind about him. No. I liked him, but when I saw what he did, and I do mention earlier on in the video, he does say a lot of stupid things, and you know, that could be by mistake, but no, like, <laughs> obviously I'm a Christian, so I'm gonna quote scripture here, lol, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. Okay, no, that is a really bad cringe-worthy Christian joke. Rafe is not only incredibly stupid, but has a lot of toxic tendencies, and that is shown especially in this book, and you realize how insecure you are when you are put into a situation where you literally imprison your partner and that is what he does and I understand this has happened with Akatar before and Tamlin got called out for it but why isn't Rafe getting called out for it you know Rafe was a really good character to be introduced to and it's funny because you're seeing a lot of layers to this character as this series goes on but at the very same time I can't side with him I shipped Leah and Rafe earlier on but I have to say it right now their relationship is very toxic and they need to work on things and what I would have really appreciated which I actually do say in my original final clip of this video that I was going to include in my vlog But I was just mostly angry whereas now I'm a little bit more critical <sighs> An epilogue should have been included. I think Mary E. Pearson would have done her fans and Leah and Rafe shippers, especially if she wanted their arc to succeed, she could have at least given us an epilogue. And not only that, we could have had more from Rafe's perspective because I want to be able to empathize with Rafe, but I cannot. And I understand why people side with Rafe over Leah, but you've got to understand this. When a protagonist or when someone has a special gift, and they have a partner, and their partner loves them, and is supposedly respectful of them. You know, that partner needs to be able to choose to understand their partner's gift. The only one out of the two love interests that truly understands and chooses to understand that is Caden. And I'm not saying that Leah and, and Caden should end up together because they've come to the conclusion that they're not perfect for each other and that makes sense. I'm happy that they're friends and I love Caden now and I have for the last month, like I've just adored the thought of Caden, but I can't side with Rafe because if you are in a relationship with someone and if you truly care about someone, you will try to understand where they're coming from at least. And what I do like about Leah in this series is that even though Rafe does make mistakes, she chooses to understand why he made those choices. And that being said, I'm gonna cut to the chase about one of those weird mistakes. He got betrothed to someone because his phone got challenged or something like that. She chose to understand that situation, right? <laughs> even though it broke her heart, she chose to understand that. So like, why couldn't Rafe simply understand her gift is telling her that they're in danger and she doesn't want everybody to die. Why can't he understand that? That is how I feel about the beauty of darkness. The beauty of darkness was a complete mess. Do I think that Rafe should have been betrothed? No. I don't think that Mary E. Person should have put that in there. It might further on the story of the politics, but it doesn't benefit the romance in any way. If you didn't want the romance to be successful in the first place, why did you give us so much hope? Mary E. Person. Mary E. Person, very talented writer. I'm not happy with this conclusion at all, and I don't think that you're meant to be happy with this conclusion. When you objectively look at it, it's not something that you should be happy with. That being said, am I bitter? Yes. There are so many other fantasy romances that are so much more healthy, and I actually read the Seven Realms series after the series, and I recommend the Seven Realms series a lot more than I recommend the Remnant Chronicles. And also, I'm currently reading the Air Awakened series by Elise Kova, which is another amazing fantasy romance series. I also recommend that, but would I recommend the Remnant Chronicles, or would I even say that the romance is healthy in the Remnant Chronicles? No, it's not. It really is not. And it's funny because I started off this series with low expectations. I ended up loving the series in the middle of reading it, and then the beauty of darkness just destroyed 
everything. The title of this video is essentially The Remnant Chronicles destroyed me. It destroyed me for other fantasy romances, I'm going to be honest, because even though I love the Seven Realms series, and though I am loving Air Awakens, I, in the back of my mind, am still thinking about the Remnant Chronicles. It has scarred me. The way that it was written, like Mary E. Person, she's talented, these characters are so impactful to anybody who has ever come across them, and who has ever really enjoyed the series, but overall, very disappointing. It's really ruined me. First of all, for other tastes, but also at the very same time, it's ruined me because of its finale. This being said, I guess that's gonna be it for this video today, book lovers. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Kind of like throughout September and now October, we're in my birthday month, <laughs> 25. And uh, my biggest worry in life is the Remnant Chronicles. Ugh, feel free to send me a gift, guys. I'm really flustered after editing this video. <laughs> Jokes. If you enjoyed seeing me tortured, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see me tortured by more series. And also, I have social medias if you want to follow me. I'm at Books on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm also Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash gswizzle. I love you, book lovers, and I will see you later. Peace. I went half when I flipped it in a double. Mm -hmm. I went half when I flipped it in a double.